This is TOS Television, your digital force pan African news network. I am Abigail Okmade and this is Africa Now. Sudanese women's rights activist Amira Osman has been released by the authorities after being held incommunicado for two weeks. Osman, who heads the rights group No to Women's Oppression, had been taken from her house in the middle of the night by armed men in plain clothes on January 22, her family said. Osman's sister said she was released on bail after being charged with firearm possession. Now, some experts argue that democracy is the way forward for Africa, despite military takeovers in five different African countries in the past year. The most recent surveys conducted by Afrobarometer found that citizens in Mali, Guinea, and Burkina Faso backed military intervention in the hope that it would pave the way for a more effective form of civilian government, not because they aspire to live under authoritarian rule. According to Leonard Mbele Nziega and Nick Cheeseman, one reason that democracy may remain the favored political system is the poor performance of authoritarian governments and the universal desire to have a say in decisions that affect their own lives. And Mali's government has asked the West African Economic and Monetary Union to lift sanctions that will have severe consequences for the population. The Regional Monetary Union in January instructed all financial institutions under its umbrella to suspend Mali with immediate effect after the military junta that seized power in 2020 decided to delay a national election. Mali blamed the sanctions for the $31 million in bond defaults last week. Nearly a week after an attempted coup in Guinea-Bissau, the sound of heavy gunfire was heard in the capital that created panic among some civil servants seen fleeing their homes. The attack by unknown gunmen was on the offices of Capital Radio, a private radio station that was previously targeted in July of 2020. Equipment including transmitter, mixing console, computers of the station that is an affiliate of the Voice of America were destroyed. Now to Tunisia. The police on Monday shut the Supreme Judicial Council building and stopped staff from entering the building. This comes as President Said Kais vowed non-interference a day after he dissolved the council, accusing its members of bias and corruption. He accused judges of loyalty to political factions and cited cases that have languished in the court for years without verdicts. This is your Digital Force Pan African News Network, TOS Television. You're watching Africa Now. More stories coming your way after the break. Just stay tuned. Welcome back. South Africa's intelligence services failed to foresee and disrupt days of arson and looting last year. A report into the unrest commissioned by the president in August and released on Monday has disclosed. The report also said the intelligence was reluctant to gather information on certain political individuals fearing to be accused of interfering in politics. The violence that killed over 300 people was sparked by the imprisonment of former president Jacob Zuma for defying a court order to testify at a corruption inquiry. And the Academic Staff Union of Universities in Nigeria has said its members in universities across the country will embark on another strike soon. The lecturers have accused the government of failing to implement agreements reached by the two parties over a year ago concerning, concerning pay and conditions. If it goes ahead, it would be the second strike in two years. And the African Union heads of states and government have approved Kiswahili as one of the bloc's official working languages following a request by the vice president. Dr. Philip Mpango had suggested that Kiswahili is one of the most widely spoken languages in Africa, with about 100 million people within and outside the continent. Last year, UNESCO declared July 7 as the World Kiswahili Language Day. In Kenya, President Uhuru Kenyatta on Monday launched the national scale-up of the universal health coverage, which seeks to ensure that all Kenyans access quality health care. Kenyatta, who launched the ambitious health plan in the coastal city of Mombasa, said the COVID-19 pandemic has brought to bear the urgent need for the country to upscale implementation of the health care. The health care policy covers the period of 2020 to 2030. 
Now more than 600 hectares of forest land have been laid to waste by the fire that engulfed the famous Ababres National Park and forest in central Kenya, threatening protected elephants and endangered black rhinos. Firefighters and local residents were able to contain the huge blaze on Monday that started on Saturday, authorities said. Although the cause of the fire is not yet known, scientists have blamed climate change for the recent harsh dry seasons experienced in many parts of the country. And that is Africa Now. For more updates, to visit our website at www.tostvnetwork.com. Follow us and like our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Remember to subscribe on YouTube to stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS Television Network. I am Abigail Okwade. Thanks for watching.